Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Uh, I'm here with Emma Spencer and Kerry Rolls from Dorset Health, and they're doing a talk later on today on student mental health. So student mental health is always in the news at the moment, um, understandably so. Um, tell us a bit about what you're doing to engage with students, to reach students with the stuff that you do. It's a whole variety of things really. I think it's about kind of reaching a population in all in different ways. So lots of students are flooded with information from freshers fairs and kind of events. So actually kind of we have to think a bit more inventively about not just being at those events, although that's helpful to have presence, it's looking at kind of our um, website, making sure that it's easily accessible, um, and also kind of looking at kind of throughout the term, uh, making sure we're doing other events, not just at the beginning of an academic year. So like um, uh, looking at Student Mental Health Day, looking at World Mental Health Day, looking at kind of key events in the calendar, and using those as opportunities to spread the word. Um, but we also do other things and, and looking a bit of the theme of our talk today is about digital sort of ideas for therapy so we are looking at kind of webinars we're looking at kind of a possibility of attend anywhere um, to reach students who perhaps are due to transport or kind of moving out of area during the academic year and the term to be able to engage them in sort of different ways as well so and we're looking um, I mean maybe about the group work as well and kind of planning those at set times through sort of the academic year so it's already kind of forecast mm -hmm. isn't it with you guys in Southampton yeah so what we run courses a specific student courses that covers a, a range of um, depression and anxiety sort of tips so worry procrastination perfectionism so really focused symptoms that we see in quite um, a lot of our students and we run them at um, both university campuses so that they're on site, they're within that, uh, they're 10 week courses, so they're within the term time um, and that they are you know, working also with their peers as well, um, which we see really good recovery rates coming from. But I think absolutely it's branching out into, you know, so we don't fall into that trap of, you know, that well, they've referred in October and then they move home again for a period of a month or so and then they're out of the area and the same over the summer. So, it's looking at um, agreements with GPs and local areas about actually how do we manage that better um, and in Southampton particularly and I think the same in Bournemouth that we have an agreement with our GPs that if someone is a student in our local area but although they're away for a, few, a period of time as long as their GP remains based within our local areas they can still continue to access that so that's where the digital therapies become really really important um, the same as the telephone working with step two um, to still continue that working although uh, and not putting them at a disadvantage just because they've come in at different times of the year really. I live in Bristol, mm -hmm. work in Bristol. Bristol mm -hmm. has had so many student suicides over yeah. recent years, it's a real issue that the university are dealing with. Um, and Bristol's a really multicultural mm -hmm. city but it doesn't have a very multicultural student population. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you a question about reach. Mm -hmm. I spoke to a Sikh man who studied in Bristol and really struggled with mental health issues and didn't use the university service because he didn't feel like it was for him. Um, so reach in terms of that, in terms of maybe ethnicity, but also reach in terms of severity when you have people who are really mm -hmm. ill and feeling suicidal. So what, what are you doing to try and reach those very difficult mm. groups? So I think, as, as you mentioned, obviously Bristol has made headlines and it's, it's had a lot of difficulties recently and I think particularly Southampton and Bournemouth it's because of that, because of that cluster of suicides, that the term time agreement sort of um, was broken in with the GPs, that allowing students to be able to move home for a period of, you know, Christmas, Easter, the summer, but still continue to access services in one area. Because I think that was something they really recognised was a challenge, and we needed to prevent the, the suicides, particularly with our um, ethnic communities. Southampton, um, I don't know if you've ever been, but it's a very ethnic diverse um, city, it, within quite a small city area, um, it's got loads and loads of different subcultures, so students are being one, BME, AME being another, and in so many, and I think we have uh, specific people that are based at clinics, so whether it be on the student campuses, whether it be that they visit the mosque regularly, so we go along often on Friday and we're invited to just be in the presence and be accessible if, um, so we send men and females down. Um, we do a lot of outreach work across the city, so attending like uh, the Mila Festival, um, 
pride festivals, you know, so all these different communities that we are trying to be there and say, hey, could talk to us and, and thinking of different activities that I suppose we can do, particularly at Freshers Fairs as well, you know, what's going to get them to come and talk to us that's not an NHS banner behind. Um, we're not quite at the point of VR though, unfortunately. We, our stands don't look that exciting, but you know, it is a way of actually how can we work with them. And I think particularly um, having those specific staff members and link workers that they can be um, maybe leaders in that community to come here go to, so that they like right, we'll invite this practitioner down again. We work with them and actually keep that link going. One of the interesting things in our uh, BAME communities was um, a misconception that we didn't have male therapists. So that was something we'd learned, we heard a few years ago and it was like, it, it shocked us I suppose, but actually that was something because it's so much psychological therapies are, is female, but some of the men in those communities didn't want to come talk to a female. And so we have our men being present, being down there, going along to their coffee mornings and being invited in um, by the imams and, you know, actually having that kind of breaking down those stereotypes that I think we see. I wondered also about the digital reach, because I guess that's something that changes so much so quickly. You know, if I mentioned TikTok as a social network to people in a mental health conference, even though it's a really fast growing and popular platform for young people, they're like, what? What's that? Um, so I wondered what we can do to make sure that we're aware of those trends and that we can actually use digital technology to reach people where they are. What do you think? Yeah, I, was, I don't know if this is the time to admit I haven't heard of TikTok. Yeah, this <laughs> no, is the time. I'm not to tell all about it. <laughs> yeah. um, but I suppose sort of training, coming along mm. to events like this, kind of hearing about what's going on is, is good and not just for, you know, where possible, kind of looking at sort of the university impact. So we use mm. sort of different digital packages um, and actually it's about one thing about our, you know, my team knowing about it, but kind of for that to reach out wider in the university is, is a bigger problem. So, you know, even at the bottom of our email signature, we have a banner of kind of different options available. But actually when we ask students, do you know, what is out there, they still come back with the not knowing kind of that it's accessible to everybody. So there is a big, uh, you know, thing about reaching people and kind of spreading the word and so it's I suppose looking at different ways of communication so and where people might look for that and I was just going to say we've got a brilliant um, sort of data analysis an analyst who is really hot on um, loads of different technologies obviously understands how everything works and how it can link in practice working within mm -hmm. RCs um, and we um, over the past year 18 months we've been working with closely with NHS England on apps that are sort of looking for in their trial phases that we've, so we're uh, some of the trusts that are sort of trialling things for depression for OCD um, and actually quite keen on new options and new ways of accessing clients and offering therapies. So, and our staff are brilliant, like that as soon as I mention, oh, we've got this to try, it's like, right, I'll do that. You know, they're straight to say, you know, really keen to kind of move away almost from that face to face at step two, you know, they're, and telephone working, they like the innovative and bit different for them I suppose as well but yeah they're really supportive on all the options that we've got. Yeah. Thanks for that. Good luck with the talk. Thanks. <laughs>